Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today, we're finally starting to explore AMD's Ryzen Mobile 4000 U-series processors, the low-power variants destined for slim, light, ultra-portable laptops. We were originally meant to have performance data for these CPUs about three months ago, but between now and then, there's been this pesky human malware situation. So yeah, we've only been able to get U-series devices into our hands in the last few weeks. In today's video, we're starting in the mid-range with the Ryzen 5 4500U. When you look at AMD's Ryzen 4000 lineup, this isn't the lowest end part. There is a Ryzen 3 4300U on the market with just four cores, but the 4500U is the next step up. We're getting six cores and six threads here with a 2.3 gigahertz base and 4.0 gigahertz boost alongside eight megabytes of level three cache and six Vega GPU compute units clocked up to 1500 megahertz, all with a default TDP of 15 watts. AMD segmentation in the U-series is mostly regarding core and thread counts. So this Ryzen 5 4500U ends up with an impressive six cores but without SMT. The 4600U, one step higher in the lineup, adds back in SMT, and then the top-end Ryzen 7 parts both have eight cores, which we'll hopefully have hands on time within the coming weeks. We did cover AMD's new Ryzen 4000 processors extensively in a news video a few months back, but that feels like a lifetime ago, so I think it's worth going back through some of the more important upgrades we are getting here. The biggest one is that Ryzen 4000 APUs are now using AMD's latest Zen 2 technology, which first launched last year in third gen Ryzen desktop CPUs under the Ryzen 3000 brand. While these APUs are also third gen Zen 2 products, for some reason AMD has decided that Ryzen 4000 branding is more appropriate. This new Renoir APU die that AMD are using for Ryzen Mobile 4000 contains a number of upgrades over the previous generation of APUs. One is the increase from 4 to 8 CPU cores, which is why the Ryzen 5 4500U can include 6 CPU cores. The other main one is the change to the GPU layout. While this APU does still use the Vega architecture and has fewer compute units at 8 down from 11, AMD has heavily optimized the design for 7 nanometer, so we see higher clocks and better performance overall. Other important upgrades include support for DDR4 3200 and LPDDR4X 4266 memory, upgraded display and multimedia engines, and significant improvements to battery life through efficiency upgrades and optimization. It's a fundamental overhaul of AMD's mobile offering that makes them much more competitive with Intel's powerhouse lineup, as we've seen demonstrated with the H series that comfortably beats Intel's options in many productivity tests. The main competitor for Ryzen Mobile 4000 and the Ryzen 5 4500U comes from Intel's split U-series lineup, with both Comet Lake and Ice Lake processors available. Some popular options here include the Core i5-10210U on the Comet Lake side, and the Core i5-1035G1 on the Ice Lake side. However, given what we've seen with AMD's higher power mobile parts, it's quite likely the Ryzen 5 4500U will deliver competitive performance with Core i7 CPUs, as we'll see in the coming benchmarks. For today's benchmarking of the Ryzen 5 4500U, I've purchased Lenovo's IdeaPad 5 14 inch. Uh, this is not a full review of the laptop, and honestly, I'm not quite sure what I think of it yet, although I do know the screen is another 66% sRGB garbage tier panel, which is a bit disappointing. The IdeaPad 5 has two main power profiles, which run the Ryzen 5 4500U at unusual limits, at least with my retail system with the latest drivers installed. The intelligent cooling mode leads to a long-term package power limit of 19 watts, while the extreme performance mode clocked it up to 26 watts. We'll be showing the performance in both profiles where possible. This laptop also has 16 gigabytes of dual channel DDR4-3200 memory, as opposed to LPDDR4X. I suspect this will be a more common configuration for mid-range to entry-level systems, while the higher-end stuff will use LPDDR4X memory, just something to keep in mind. Usual test notes for laptop supply. The results you see in the following charts are an average across all systems of the same configuration. We test with dual channel memory where possible and try to make apples to apples comparisons, although this can be tricky with laptops. You can see the full list of laptops we tested in the description below. Let's kick this one off with a look at Cinebench R20. 
The Ryzen 5 4500U is a very impressive processor in this benchmark, particularly looking at multi-core. In its 26 watt configuration, the 4500U is able to get within the ballpark of Intel's recent 6-core H-series processors, including the Core i7-9750H and the latest Core i7-10750H. Meanwhile, it finishes ahead of the flagship Comet Lake Core i7-10710U, despite only having 6 threads versus 12 in the Intel part. The 4500U also easily beats the Core i7-1065G7 in multi-thread workloads. This is Intel's best Ice Lake processor on 10 nanometer, but as it only has 4 cores, it simply cannot get close to the 4500U, even when given 25 watts of power to work with. The 4500U is around 50% faster at its similar 26 watt power configuration, which is an enormous discrepancy. The difference between 19 watt and 26 watt here isn't very large, as the Ryzen APU is able to boost for quite a while, often up to around 36 watts or so. In terms of single thread performance, the 4500U is also impressive, as it can run at pretty high turbo frequencies on a single core without exceeding the power limit. This allows it to deliver, in a worst case situation, equivalent performance to Ice Lake, or better performance than almost every other processor in this chart, especially U-series parts built on 14 nanometer. We're also seeing a substantial generational leap for AMD's U-series. The Ryzen 5 4500U is over 80% faster than the Ryzen 5 3500U, albeit with a 4 watt increase to power in our test configuration thanks to Lenovo's weird settings. However, it's clear the 4500U is a huge leap for efficiency. Video encoding is traditionally not something you would do on an ultra portable as 15 to 25 watt processors are not very fast at this task. However, the Ryzen 5 4500U makes the case that in fact a U-series laptop is capable of video encoding in Handbrake with X265 instructions. As you can see from this chart, the long-term workload is, like with Cinebench, approximately as fast as Intel's 6-core H-series processors when the 4500U is able to consume 26 watts of power. Even at 19 watts, the 4500U delivers impressive performance, far outstripping Intel's U-series parts. The margin here is so large in some situations, it is a bit of a bloodbath. For example, the 26 watt 4500U is 52% faster in handbrake than the 25 watt Core i7 1065G7, and exactly double the performance of Intel's Core i5 10210U, which is a quad core Comet Lake processor. While I wouldn't want to encode videos on any of Intel's U series parts, as the performance just isn't there, the 4500U starts to put ultra portables in the frame for heavier productivity tasks. The story continues with a look at Blender. Normally this is a workload you wouldn't want to run on a U-series processor, with perhaps the exception of the Core i7-10710U at 25 watts. But the Ryzen 5 4500U approaches the performance of 6-core H-series parts, while outperforming every other Intel U-series option. The margins to Ice Lake are again significant, with a 40% gain at 25 watts and over 60% at the lower power targets. One of the most impressive use cases for the Ryzen 5 4500U that I feel is in code compilation. The 26 watt variant performs at the level of a Core i7-10750H in this GCC compile workload, while the margin to Ice Lake with the 19 watt configuration is 38% for just a 4 watt increase in long term power draw. This could make a huge difference for those wanting quick compilations in a mixed multi and single threaded compile. With some heavier workloads out of the way, let's see how the 4500U does in more relevant workloads to an ultra portable. Here is Excel with a large number crunching test. The 4500U is outperformed here marginally by Ice Lake, with both CPUs using similar power in their burst state. But given the 1065G7 is a higher tier processor, and the 4500U does still beat parts like the Core i5-10210U, this is still quite an impressive showing from AMD's mid-range Ryzen 4000 APU. While our Excel benchmark is reasonably heavy, PCMark's productivity test is on the lighter side. In this mixed benchmark, the Ryzen 5 4500U holds a significant performance lead, in fact matching the Ryzen 5 4600H, likely because significant aspects to this test are lightly threaded. What we end up with is better light productivity performance than Intel's 14 and 10 nanometer processors. The 4500U is 7 to 15% faster than the Core i7-1065G7, and over 10% ahead of the 10210U. It's a similar story in the Essentials test, which covers web browsing and app loading. In the worst case for Ryzen, it's marginally ahead of Ice Lake's best 25 watt processor, which given the 4500U's mid-tier position is a great result. 
Compared to other parts such as the 10210U and older chips like the Core i7-8565U, we're seeing more substantial gains. In 7-zip, we once again see strong results from Ryzen. The 4500U isn't faster than Intel's Core i7-10710U with equal power limits, but does outperform every other relevant chip, including the Core i7-1065G7 and even some of Intel's quad-core H-series processors. This bodes well for a workload that is common for productivity and important for ultra-portable type devices. Cryptography performance sees the Ryzen 5 4500U fall behind the Core i7-1065G7 in a rare loss for Ryzen. However, the 4500U is still in the ballpark of other U-series processors and doesn't perform badly here. MATLAB is another stronger result for Ice Lake, with the Ryzen 5 4500U sitting in the class between the 1065G7 and other U-series processors like the Core i5-10210U. Again, this isn't a bad result for Ryzen, especially as the 1065G7 is a higher tier part. However, for MATLAB, there is a reason to go for a more premium notebook processor. And now we get to everyone's favorite PDF exporting benchmark. This is a test that was horrible for past Ryzen processors. You can see all of AMD's previous attempts at the bottom of the chart. But with the superior single thread performance, the 4500U fares much better here. It isn't as fast as the Core i7-1065G7, losing by around 7%, but sits somewhere in the middle and does get close to Intel's 14 nanometer u series processors, especially the quad-core variants. Adobe Photoshop is another productivity workload that I feel is reasonable for an ultra-portable laptop. While Intel generally holds a lead in this benchmark when looking at H-series parts, it's a different story for U-series. The Ryzen 5 4500U isn't miles in front of the Core i7-1065G7, but performance is comparable, again a good result for AMD's mid-range part. With significant parts of Photoshop still being lightly threaded at best, AMD's equivalent single-thread performance here is doing its job. You can see just how much worse older Ryzen processors are, again they just simply can't keep up. Normally here I'd also show you Premiere benchmarks, but the latest update doesn't play nicely with ultra-portable hardware. With the Ryzen 5 4500U, Premiere does still not allow some GPU accelerated effects to run on the Vega GPU, such as the Lumetri filter. AMD says this is Adobe's fault, and that Ryzen Mobile 4000 should be capable of running GPU accelerated filters. Meanwhile, the latest update has, in its attempts to increase GPU accelerated encoding, fully broken support for the MX250. Not to mention that this type of video encoding now relies heavily on discrete GPUs and isn't a great use case for any ultra-portable system. You can see this in action with Puget's DaVinci Resolve benchmark. While the Ryzen 5 4500U is faster than the Core i7-1065G7 in this test, most H-series laptops with a discrete GPU are anywhere from 4 to 5 times faster. So while Ryzen U-series parts are great for CPU-limited productivity, anytime you want GPU acceleration, an ultra-portable is not the right sort of system for that task. The main use case for the integrated GPU in the Ryzen 5 4500U, aside from some light GPU acceleration, is with gaming at low settings. So let's run through a few benchmarks and see where AMD's refreshed Vega GPU, cut down to 6 compute units, does fare. In Grand Theft Auto V at low settings, running at native 1080p, the 4500U is able to provide a performance lead over Ryzen 3000 APUs, in fact beating the Ryzen 7 3750H. With the 4500U providing around 60 FPS on average, this is quite playable despite using just integrated graphics. We also see the 4500U providing a notable performance lead over Intel's Ice Lake Core i7-1065G7 when configured to 25 watts. However, Nvidia's MX250 remains the preferred choice for this title, with the 4500U unable to outperform Nvidia's basic discrete option. Although we'll see how that changes when all the Vega CUs are unlocked when we test the Ryzen 7 4800U later. The situation is a bit different in Civilization VI. This is a game that Ryzen processors love, with the 4500U massively outperforming Ice Lake and even the MX250. Not only that, but the 4500U leaves the older Ryzen APUs in the dust, especially the 3700U, although there is a power configuration difference here. CSGO hits both the CPU and GPU at lower settings with mobile processors. The Ryzen 5 4500U performs well here, but Ice Lake is around 15% faster in its G7 graphics configuration with everything unlocked. Still, given the 4500U is a cutdown processor, it's a good result outperforming the MX250. 
We also have Gears 5 here representing a heavily GPU limited game running at medium settings, which is a bit unrealistic on ultra portable laptops. Here the 4500U is 17% faster when comparing average frame rates to the Core i7-1065G7, but it falls behind the MX250. However, we do get, in combination with the higher power limit, around double the frame rate of AMD's 3500U. Before jumping into the conclusion, let's see about some performance breakdowns. I'll start here with the Ryzen 5 4500U versus the Core i7-1065G7, when both have roughly the same power limit. It would have been nice to compare the Ryzen 5 APU against a Core i5 from Intel's Ice Lake series, but I think the point is made just fine here anyway. In multi-core workloads, the Ryzen 5 4500U is up to 50% faster, especially in longer term tests like Handbrake and Blender. In more burst type workloads, gains are not as pronounced but the Ryzen 5 4500U still leads by around 15%. And then with single thread performance, Ryzen also generally leads here, but not always, and margins either way are in the single digits. This is all comparing AMD's mid-tier Ryzen 4000 APU to Intel's best 25 watt offering with Ice Lake. At lower power limits, it's harder to make a fair comparison, but you can expect Ryzen to be faster here as well, except in a few edge cases. Single thread performance is largely equivalent, while multi-thread workloads see Ryzen take the crown. In a more reasonable class comparison, here we have the Ryzen 5 4500U up against the Core i5-10210U. While the Ryzen processor is consuming 4 watts more power, this allows the CPU to provide up to double the performance of Intel's Comet Lake quad-core in multi-thread workloads. The 4500U is also 5-10% to faster in single-thread tests and generally delivers a far superior experience when you also factor in the enormous gulf in GPU capabilities. While not really a fair battle in any way, the Ryzen 5 4500U can be a reasonable ultra-portable substitute for the Core i7-10750H in some workloads, which is very impressive. It's just single-digit percentages behind in tests like Handbrake, Cinebench, Light Productivity, and GCC compilation. That's not to say buying a U-series processor instead of H-series always makes sense, because the 4500U isn't in the same class for things like video editing, especially when you factor in that a lot of H-series laptops come with discrete GPUs, but depending on how you use your laptop, there might be no reason to go for a 6-core H-series Intel system. And finally, we have the gen-on-gen -gen performance difference between the Ryzen 5 3500U and Ryzen 5 4500U. Again, 4 watts of power difference here, but we are seeing very substantial performance gains. Workloads like Handbrake are well over twice as fast, and single thread performance is improved by over 25%. You don't often see these sorts of performance upgrades between just a single generation of products. All things considered, the Ryzen 5 4500U is a very impressive mid-range low-power APU. AMD Zen 2 architecture, when scaled down into a 25-watt power envelope or lower, is able to deliver an enormous performance gain over the previous Ryzen generation. Single-thread performance is way up, now matching or even exceeding Intel's U-series parts, while multi-thread performance benefits significantly from six CPU cores, even if SMT is disabled on this part. In many ways, AMD is redefining what sorts of workloads an ultra-portable laptop is suitable for with their Ryzen Mobile 4000 series. Previously, you might have chosen a 6-core Intel H-series laptop for things like video encoding, code compilation, or CPU-based rendering, because U-series components are just too slow. But the Ryzen 5 4500U approaches the performance of a Core i7-10750H in many of these tasks, making a U-series laptop suitable for genuine video encoding or coding work for the first time. And AMD hasn't sacrificed anything to deliver this level of performance. The Ryzen 5 4500U is also highly competent for lighter workloads like Microsoft Office, web browsing, or photo editing, as single or lightly threaded performance either matches or exceeds what Intel has to offer in this class. In many cases, the 4500U is a better choice than Intel's best mainstream Ice Lake processor, the Core i7-1065G7, despite really not competing with it in terms of class or price. It's not always faster, but for most U-series laptop buyers, I think it will deliver the better experience. When matching up the Ryzen 5 4500U against a Core i5 part like the 10210U, Intel's competing part is just not up to scratch. If the option you have is between a 4500U system or a Core i5 system at the same price, with the performance on offer here, it's an absolute no-brainer. The 4500U is giving you so much more. 
AMD are also delivering great integrated GPU performance. In the Core i5 bracket, it's an easy victory for Ryzen, but the 4500U is also able to outperform Intel's fully unlocked Core i7-1065G7 most of the time, despite only three quarters of the GPU being active. This makes the 4500U suitable for light gaming, whether that's casual games at modest settings, or even some higher performance titles at the lowest settings. However, with the configuration at hand, AMD are still leaving the door open for low-power discrete GPUs. A pairing of an Intel CPU with an NVIDIA GeForce MX250 can be somewhat faster. I don't expect that to be the case with AMD's higher tier APUs, but it's something to be aware of. That said, MX250 systems are usually going to be more expensive, so I think AMD has done a reasonable job of offering compelling graphics performance with the 4500U. I was also extremely glad to experience no software bugs or issues with this Ryzen 4000 laptop that I purchased at retail. The launch of the first ever Ryzen mobile series back in 2017 was plagued with issues, many of which were showstoppers and most related to bugs with the GPU. No such problems here aside from in Premiere which also seems bugged on competing hardware. What remains an unknown at this point is battery life, and without an apples to apples platform comparison, we're not going to be able to explore that just yet. Anecdotally, the battery life from the IdeaPad 5 seems decent, but Intel CPUs are particularly good in this department, especially Ice Lake. For what it's worth, AMD is claiming similar battery performance to Ice Lake, helped largely by their more efficient CPU. AMD doesn't expect to win for idle battery consumption. With this testing complete on AMD's mid-range Ryzen Mobile 4000 part, I'm super excited to see what's possible with the 8-core designs, especially the Ryzen 7 4800U. Based on some of the longer productivity benchmarks I ran on the 4500U, it's quite possible the 4800U will outperform a number of 8-series processors and be a superb choice for CPU-limited productivity. We'll have to wait and see how that ends up though, when we finally get some hands-on time with it. That's it for this one. Hopefully you now have all the information at hand that you need to make some U-series buying decisions. I think the 4500U is going to be quite a popular choice given that you can find laptops as low as I think it's 650 US dollars, which sounds, yeah, like a pretty compelling choice from a performance perspective. As always, you can subscribe to catch more of our mobile testing. As I mentioned, we're still hoping to get in some more U-series parts soon. As always, we appreciate the support of our Patreon members who allow us to buy laptops for testing like this. If you're interested in supporting us, head to the links in the description below. You'll find access to our Discord, monthly live streams, and behind-the-scenes videos. That's it. I'll catch you in the next one.